how much do you think it would cost to start a brand new dog training business? Maybe you are thinking of starting one yourself. Maybe you've had one for years and years. So I would love to know your opinion on this question as well. So put it down in the comments. So I would like to give you my experience after having coached and worked with hundreds of dog training businesses, if not thousands at this point, that I have seen over the last 12 years that have been through my programs and been in my Facebook group and have been, you know, that I've been interacting with for on a daily basis for many, many years. I've seen pretty much every yeah, but, and every variation and every possibility when it comes to answers to questions like this. So I figured I would pose this question to one of the Facebook groups that I admin with a bunch of dog trainers in it, several thousand dog trainers, and just said, basically, if you were to start a dog training business today, you have dog training skills, you already have that covered, but you don't have anything else set up. What would it cost to get to the point of being able to take, let's say your first client, website, advertising, anything like that, just open-ended, see what everybody's opinions were. And there was quite a range of opinions. In fact, I put a dollar amount thing in the poll and the top answer was one to $3,000. That was 41% of the votes as of right now. And the next most popular answer was three to $10,000. So depending on what people counted as investment to start the business, the range varied quite a lot. There were some people that even said zero. That was only 4% of the vote, but you get the idea. It ranges a lot. So one person said that she said three to $10,000. And she said, because I would say it takes four to eight weeks to gain momentum. So that would be initial advertising investments, as well as coverage for one month's expenses while you're genu genu gener generating the clientele to be stable. Basically, she was including how much it would cost to live on for the time that it would cover. And there were other people who said three to $10,000 even without that. There were other people who said almost nothing. And their idea was that they would start with just a Facebook page and get a little bit of word of mouth going about their abilities and maybe get a client out of that before they even officially have anything real in place in terms of a business name, a business bank account, a contract, a website advertising, anything like that. So it kind of depends on what you mean by starting and what you mean by client and what you mean by investment and a whole bunch of other things that obviously it was a completely open-ended question. So I'll tell you my answer just in my experience again with all the dog training businesses that I've seen over the years. And the answer does vary depending on, again, how much you want to spend in time versus money. So in general, if you're gonna set things up to be sustainable and be done the best way from the start, the investments that you will make in your business when you first start are gonna be quite different than they would be if you're okay with having things be a little bit casual or even messy, right? When you first start and figure you'll improve them over time. So it depends on a few different things. It also depends on your own perspective of starting a business and what a business really means. So without me just continuing continuously using air quotes all throughout this video, I'm gonna let you interpret all of those words however you would like. But the way I interpret starting a business is treating it like a real business. It can be casual, it can be informal in some ways, and it can be super simple. I like things super simple in my own business. I never wanted to start my dog training business with the idea of having a facility and a team and a lot of staff or anything like that. That was never really my thing. In my case, I wanted to work from home, be able to work with clients for a long time. It was just in their homes and it was just me and keep things super, super simple and lean. So when I first started my business, what I needed was a contract, which I researched and I used time rather than money. I didn't hire a lawyer, although I'm not recommending that's the way to go. That's the kind of thing I have to say, you know, get a lawyer to look at a contract because that's just what I'm supposed to say as far as advice goes. But I didn't do that myself personally. I did research instead. So I used time and created a contract that I thought was good enough. I created a website that I thought was good enough. And I did time-based advertising rather than money-based advertising because there was no such thing back then as online ads. If there was, I didn't know anything about it and didn't know how to do it. And I was 22 years old, just starting my business. There was a lot of things that I had to use time and, and energy and research and things like that rather than hiring out or paying somebody to do. There was also no one, there was no me. So I couldn't figure out, or I couldn't hire out the knowledge on marketing. I couldn't do a course to learn how to market my dog training business or how to run it. I had to figure all that out on my own. So it was a lot more time invested than money. And you can still go that route. You can still figure things out yourself and spend less money. One of the great things about dog training businesses in general is that as it kind of relates to other businesses, it's very cheap to start 
And a lot of times that means that a lot of people enter the industry with hopes and dreams and very little business skills and try to make money. So that's some of your competition. You're up against sometimes people who are undercharging. They're not spending a lot on anything. They don't necessarily treat their businesses as serious businesses. We tend to get in this industry a lot of people who are passion driven meaning they start the business because it is their passion and they'd love to be paid for it because it is their passion and it's how they want to use all their time. But they aren't necessarily business-minded people. The business is kind of incidental to the passion. It just be, would be great to make money at your passion, which is fine, but a totally different mentality than other people who start the business because they want a business. They're entrepreneurially minded and dog training sounds like a great fit. So it's very different kind of directions. In my case, I was more of the business side. I wanted to have my own business and the dog training sounded like a great fit. So I didn't come at it from, I had a dog, I had a problem, I trained my dog and I developed a passion for this. That's most often the story and the direction that most dog trainers come from. So what I would do is encourage you to view this as an actual business, that you are an entrepreneur and that you have a responsibility to do things as wisely as you can, but it doesn't necessarily mean as expensively as you can or as com com you know, complex, complexly as you can. You can keep it simple as well. With all that in mind, an example of the expenses to get your business started might be your website it might cost you $50 to buy a domain and buy some hosting per month. And so that might be inexpensive. You could sign up on a website that's like a drag and drop, really easy website builder that might only cost you a few dollars a month. You could get started that way. You could go the harder route and just have a Facebook page and try to get word of mouth. It's free but it tends not to be sustainable. Usually, like 99% of the time, dog trainers will need a really good website so that they can advertise it online so that when they do, they can get people who are actively looking for a dog trainer instead of just hoping word spreads and people stumble upon you. So, so in the beginning, what you do to get a, your first couple clients may not be what you always do. So you might start off with just a business Facebook page and spread the word, and that might get you your first client or two. You, then you might reinvest that into other things like more education on marketing or a, be a better website or somebody to design your website for you or somebody to write your website for you or any number of other things. So there's limitless things that you could hire somebody to do as a professional rather than doing yourself. So again, you have to trade the time of learning and being a YouTube studier on a whole bunch of things or pay somebody to teach you how to do them. And that goes the same thing with my programs. I have lots and lots and lots of free training. I have really inexpensive training and I have more expensive training. Our most popular program is around $2,000 and it covers everything you need to know about creating your programs and pricing them and writing your website and what a really nice website would look like and the elements of it and where to advertise and why and the psychology behind everything as far as how dog owners think and how they make decisions and what they buy and what they won't buy and a whole bunch of other things that would be really, really, really helpful for you to know and save you a ton of time. But you can figure that out yourself. So it's really just a choice of using time and effort and energy or using your, your money. And you can earn some money the hard ways and then reinvest it. So the starting point is gonna look a little different for everybody. So you have your website, might cost you $50, something like that. You have some advertising expenses, which could be time of you going around to vet offices and trying to spread the word that you exist, or it could be Google ads, which is gonna be more expensive. But then you get people who are actively searching for a dog trainer in your area, so there's a trade-off. Then there's also your contract. So you could learn from a program like mine what could go in your contract and make your own or you could make your own and research and then take it to a lawyer and hope that hope that they'll kind of look at it for, you know, $100 or something. Or you can hire a lawyer for several hundred dollars to make one from scratch. So there's a lot of variation even there. Then there's naming your business and registering it and a whole bunch of other expenses that could be almost nothing or it could be a lot. It just depends on how official and how formal and how complicated you decide to do it. So many different things. You might also have a facility and you got to pay rent somewhere in order to do group classes, or you might not. You might just work out of your house and do in-home lessons. There's so much variation. And that is also one of the great things about this business is that you can kind of do what you want and you can design it the way you want. So, so the real question now is what it boils down to is, can you start a dog training business for free? And another variation of this question that I get sometimes is, can you start this business as a real business if you're broke? And that is usually the way this question comes to me is, I have absolutely no money. 
I can barely afford to cover my monthly expenses, but I would love to start this dog training business. I still need to learn a few things, but I can't even afford to pay for that knowledge. What is your advice? If you're in that situation, it is really, really hard to start or grow any business if you're absolutely broke. And the reason is because it's gonna be really hard for you to accurately make decisions about what to do because everything is scary. You have no idea if something is gonna pay off. You have no idea if any kind of change you make will make your situation worse. And from a mindset perspective, that's a really hard place to come into a business and make it successful. On the other hand, some people do really well when their backs are against the wall and they need to make something work and they do not have a choice. In that situation is usually when I get people in one of my programs that they're broke and they do it anyway. They find a way, they get in and they work it and work it and work it and make back their investment really, really quickly and they're off to the races and they're fine. But if you're not that kind of person who's like a back against the wall fighter type person, it's a really tough place to be to start a business when you have no money. So most of the time, if you are in that position where you are just super broke and you want to start your business, that's an amazing goal. But probably from a practical standpoint, you might need to do something else just to save a little bit of money first and take the initial pressure off. So that way you have the money to do things well, make a website, be able to advertise it, be able to get a contract in place, be able to get some marketing skills in place, learn some of those things and not have to just use every spare brain cell available to you to try to learn these things on your own the slow way. It's really, again, a choice of speed versus convenience versus getting reaching your goals quicker. But it's always great to have a little bit saved up before you attempt to start any business kind of how the world works most of the time that you it's really hard to start a business and be an entrepreneur when you're coming from the negative you know below the line of having any money that is usually how it works but again lots of variation it depends on a lot of different things including your personality and your preferences and how much you're hoping to make and things like that so if you were to boil everything down how much does it cost to start a dog training business? Basically a lot less than most other businesses. And from there, it ranges from anywhere from a lot of time and a lot of hard work and a lot of pounding the pavement at zero dollars to several thousand dollars and really quick speed up to the goals that you have. And it really just depends on what your resources are. To use what you've got, make decisions wisely, keep watching videos here on this channel to help save you a lot of headaches and a lot of mistakes. And tell me below what your questions are. If you're just getting started or you've been going for a while and you're at that point where you're like, I would love to grow the business, but I'm super broke. Or you have any other challenge. I would like to know what it is so I can make a video for you on that. Stay in touch and like and subscribe and do all the things. And I'll see you in the next video.